Hey guys, Super Bro Mike here, and in today's Bendy and the Ink Machine video, we take a look at a brand new audio log from Studio Handyman and Gent employee Thomas Connor. This new audio recording which recently released on the Joey Drew Studios YouTube channel details some interesting new information which not only adds further depth to the character of Tom but also gives us a better timeline of events, allowing us insight into exactly how long the process of creating the ink machine and implementing it around the studio may have taken. In this video we are going to listen to this new audio from Thomas Connor and break down exactly what what he is saying and look for some new theories that can be inferred from this dialogue. But before we begin, let's conduct a quick rundown of Thomas Connor to catch up with who he is and my previous thoughts and theories on this particular member of the studio. Thomas Connor was a handyman at the studio, but he was more than just any old handyman. He seemed to be a senior member of staff in this regard, in charge of supervising the maintenance of all major repair jobs and upkeep of the workshop's machinery, as well as watching over other janitorial workers such as the hapless Wally Franks, who he seemed to find frustrating to work with. It should also be noted that by Chapter 5's midpoint, we have heard a number of audio recordings which allude to Thomas Connor's involvement as a member of the Gent Company, who seem to have collaborated with Joey Drew Studios to design the ink machine and attempt to bring Mr. Drew's cartoon creations to life. Members report to Gent Home Office. Client, Joey Drew Studios. His general personality comes across as cranky and stern. He seems like a pretty no-nonsense guy. That, combined with his knowledge of mechanics and design, led me to theorise Thomas Connor was indeed the Tom Boris we encountered in Chapter 5. A character who features Mr. Connor's most prominent traits, but also had an affection for Alison Angel, who we can deduct was Alice Angel's secondary voice actress, Alison Pendle. A member of staff who would go on to form a connection and eventually marry Thomas Connor in real life, which we learn from a letter written by her to Joey when exploring his apartment. And there's even evidence of the two living happily together on a farm painted on the wall of the safe house by Allison right here during Chapter 5's opening too. However, outside of this information, we really don't know all that much about Thomas Connor, and that is where this new audio log comes in very handy. So let's take a listen to the first few seconds of this recording. So we're looking at quite the job here. Walls come out, pipes go in, dang walls go back in again. It's like banging your head on a rock over and over and over. First time, first act. Hundredth time, well... You just don't think much about it. Tom makes it clear exactly how the pipes that run throughout the halls of Joey Drew Studios and help pump vast amounts of ink directly from the giant ink machine below the studio to outlets and other machines above were installed. The process sounds incredibly stressful and time consuming. Each panel on the wall would need to be removed completely while the pipes were installed and then put back into place. There were likely hundreds of meters worth of pipe installed this way a process which may well have taken months, if not years. And we'll get to exactly why this is in a moment. However, it is worth noting that we can see evidence of these open wall panels and the piping inside in various chapters, most notably chapter 4 and 5. This arduous work process may have been one of the main reasons Thomas Connor always sounded so darn cranky in every audio recording. But it also adds to the existing recordings where we hear Connor complain at great lengths of his frustration towards Joey and his uncaring attitude for maintenance safety protocol. It is likely Joey rushed along this lengthy process as quickly as humanly possible in order to keep costs down and get his ink machine experiments up and running. But now let's consider the timeline of events itself. 
In Joey Drew's initial recording, which released a few weeks ago, we learned that Joey was making some big changes around the studio, and these began in the year 1931. Joey said he planned to hire a brand new team of people and literally knock down walls to expand his operation, a fact that Henry notes when returning to the studio in Bendy Chapter 1. Looks like they knocked out a wall or two after I left. Guess it took a few people to replace me. So we know Henry wasn't around to witness these changes and meet all of these new people being hired after his departure, thus making it seem many of the artists were hired to keep up with the drastic workload Joey put upon Henry during his time working there. It could also be assumed that the secrets Joey spoke of in this recording were his initial plans for the creation of the ink machine. Then, in Wally Frank's audio log from 1933, it was confirmed that the studio had filled up with new employees, and this recording made it seem like this expansion had come fairly recently. So it gave us an understanding of just how many people Joey had hired as he expanded his studio beyond simple cartoons and into merchandise with the Heavenly Toys Workshop and a theme park with the conceptualization of Bendyland. Basically, it took two years from when Henry left the studio around 1931 to set his plans of a studio expansion into place and hire all the relevant people. These people would have included employees being outsourced from the Gent Company, of which Thomas Connor was no doubt the most senior member with the biggest job responsibility. We know Henry's return to the studio, or should I say, rebirth inside it, took place in the 1960s, as we see the date 1963 on a calendar within Joey's apartment, and this of course lines up with a 30 year time period mentioned in the letter Henry received from his old pal. In between all of these dates sits Thomas Connor's latest audio log, with the date 1943. This is most interesting because it tells us the development of the ink machine had been designed by 1943 and was at this point being fitted into the studio. And while we don't exactly know how long this process would have taken, we get the sense from this recording that it wasn't an easy task, but this means most of Joey's experiments did indeed take place in the 1940s, at least the initial ones involving people such as Susie Campbell, who of course befell a terrible fate trying to become the character she had fallen in love with, Alice Angel, after Joey promised her this dream could come true. Dreams come true, Susie. So this is the timeline we are currently working with going forward with future theories. Now let's listen to the final passage from this new recording. That's what it's like working for Mr. Joey Drew. At first you feel that bad pain in your gut that you're doing something very wrong. But after a time, the dust settles and Joey's played his cards. You just learn to go with it. A bit of your soul dies with each pipe you put in. We can tell that Thomas didn't enjoy working for Joey, as he has confirmed this before, but this is the first time we really get a sense that he felt he was involved with something bad. Tom speaks of working for Joey as doing something very wrong. Now, as head of gent maintenance at the studio and the person reporting directly to both Joey and the gent company, how much did Thomas Connor really know about what was going on? Before Joey got around to human experimentation, he first tried using the ink itself, which resulted in a hollow and soulless creation, that of Demon Bendy. I will link you to a theory based around Bendy's fate and what exactly he wanted at the end of this video, so check that out for more detail on this point. But we must remember that Bendy wasn't always feared and when first created was simply shunned and locked away as an abomination by Joey Drew, as he feared it may scare away his investors, an act we know Thomas Connor may have had a certain level of involvement with. It sounds from the way Joey addresses Thomas Connor in this recording that the two are on good terms, or at least that Joey has got to know him well enough to feel comfortable with calling him Tommy for short. And this, coupled with new evidence found in Thomas's latest recording, makes me wonder if he knew way more than I had originally suspected. 
before I assumed Thomas Connor had helped out with the initial experimentation, the creation of monstrous creatures such as Bendy, but never knew about Joey's human sacrifice and the use of employees' souls to form more lucid beings such as Sammy Lawrence or Susie Campbell until he fell prey to them years later along with his wife Alison after Joey re-established contact. Now I'm not so sure. It almost sounds as if this message from Thomas Connor is a half confession. He speaks about losing a little of his soul with every pipe he puts in, almost as if he knows the greater purpose these pipes will eventually serve flowing ink around the studio to power a machine capable of witchcraft and demonic resurrection, a truly evil plan cooked up by Mr. Joey Drew, that Thomas Connor as head gent worker knew at least some part of. Why would he have helped with the construction and oversight of such a contraption? Perhaps for money? Perhaps out of fear? pressure from his employer, or perhaps to be part of something he once believed in as an inventor himself. After all, we do get hints that it was Thomas who created the seeing eye or looking glass tool as you may refer to it. So as a man with an interest in science himself, maybe Tom had some kind of morbid curiosity to see the job through, even after things got way too serious and Joey overstepped the ethical line. It's hard to know for sure, but it is worth mentioning. For this recording, it simply sounds like Connor became beaten down from years of serving underneath Joey and simply made peace with what he was involved with, no matter how inhumane it may have seemed. Perhaps we'll one day find out if these teasers do indeed end up leading to a story that expands on the ever more engaging narrative of Bendy and the Ink Machine. And that's it for today's video, please remember to give it a like if you did enjoy watching, and maybe drop a comment too, as well as subscribing to the channel, and turning on notifications so you never miss an upload. This channel specialises in variety horror content, including creepypasta readings, horror gaming facts and theories, and general interest pop culture horror videos. So, if you're interested in all things spooky, you'll find something to enjoy here at Super Horror Bro. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.